what is a dad? What makes a person a dad? Is a father someone who just has children? We know that's not true. Is it a man who provides for his family? Is that enough? Is it a man who works hard? And that may be the case. Let's see today what the Word of God says about fathers. Our text is found in the book of Proverbs, the seventh chapter, and the sixth verse. As you find it in your Bible, the 17th chapter and the sixth verse. The wisest man ever born wrote the Proverbs, and listen to what it says. Children's children are the crown of old men. There's grandpa, right? And then it says, the glory of children are their fathers. The glory of children are their fathers. The Lord bless the reading of his word and bless his servant as he brings it forth. You may be seated. In the 22nd chapter of, of Proverbs, in the 28th verse, it says, Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. You see, as fathers, grandfathers, we set landmarks in the lives of our children. Landmarks are simple boundaries, what is right and what is wrong. And unfortunately, in today's society, those have been blurred by people, but it should not be by a godly father. Fathers have been given by God the responsibility to teach, to lead, to make boundaries for their children, boundaries which are the laws of God, to produce happy, prosperous children. And you know, if your children are prosperous and happy, so will you be, right? I'll say amen for you. Why is it difficult to be a godly father today? It seems more difficult than many years that have passed. Why is it so difficult? Let's take a look at what's happening. Today's society is not stable. It keeps changing. Children are growing up in a stressful, anxious environment, aren't they? In school, at home, all kinds of things coming at them so quickly. Technology every day transmits terrible Crimes and disasters into our lives, in the lives of children. Horrible stories, hateful things, bullying, all these things are coming out of young people today. People you don't even know in other countries can be bullying you. Amazing. Unstable homes. Homes where there's a missing father or even a missing mother. Homes where to be successful, you have to be doing things that feel good, that may not be good. Exposure to drugs and alcohol all around us and laws that make even drugs legal in certain cases. Sexual immorality and so on cause all kinds of pressure on our children to be tolerant, to be tolerant of things that God says are wrong. Children can be manipulated into trouble and even death by the society that we live in. We're also a transient society. Every year, more than 30 million families in the United States change addresses, move. And by the way, changing is number one on the stress list for everyone. Moving to another address, another state, starting all over again. And for children, this is very traumatic. They've made friends, they are familiar with a particular area, and now all of a sudden it changes. And many families are changing half a dozen times with the children as well. Many young people today have lost hope in the future. They don't see any future. They don't see anything ahead, even their own future. So they live for the moment what seems to be right now, what seems to get pleasure, what seems to get me friends, I'll live that way. And unfortunately, they pay the price. STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, overdoses, suicides are rampant, even here in Staten Island, because young people have no boundaries. 
to tell them what's right or wrong. Today, the primary fear of children is losing a parent through divorce. I hate to say it, but in the church, divorce rate is higher than it is out of the church. What's wrong with that picture? Becoming a crime victim. Dying of cancer. Children are under tremendous pressure in every aspect of life. And that's where, Dad, you come in. Parents have not prepared children to be adults. Hmm? Well, sometimes they want to keep them children. And that's why they're 40 years old and they're still home. And can't work and they can't do anything. Not even pick up something on the floor. Not only that, we haven't taught children to deal with failure. You know, we don't always succeed in everything. What do we say about failure? How do you overcome failure? Look at some of the great men and women of history. They failed. But somehow they overcame it, and they kept trying and kept trying and kept trying. But not everybody can do that. And it all starts in the home. The foundation that you build can make your child a success or failure in every aspect of life. Today's child is impulsive. They do not weigh the consequences of their behavior or action. Even children, they don't think that something bad could happen, and it will. Between 1946 and 1980, the arrest rate in the United States for children under 18 was increased by almost 3,000%. Something's wrong, and it's still wrong. Today's child is more likely to get advice from a problem from a peer, their friends, than from their parents or other adults. And of course, young people, your friends know so much about life. They were able to give you a wise answer that will help you. Hmm? Remember, most people that are in trouble want you to be in trouble too. They're more comfortable that way. The media the things we watch and listen to, the music, is manipulating people, especially young people, to do whatever it takes to be liked, hmm? to be accepted, even if it's harmful to them. Children's minds are captured through programs on TV and movies and, and music, and it commutes all kinds of information to them that's not real. We believe the world to be like a TV program. It isn't. It isn't. The average teenager watches TV or listens to music over 34 hours a week. That's probably a low ball figure. The television, the computer has become the babysitter for children. And it's a trap. Not only does it have positives, but I think it has more negatives than positives. The world has become a morally and spiritually bankrupt society. Right is wrong and wrong is right. Our children are confused. Even our schools teach safe sex and encourage sexual activity. Groups such as Planned Parenthood for America, a group that is tax-funded, promote sexual promiscuity under the guise of family planning. Isn't that amazing? In, in the year 2013, they performed over 7,000... Uh, 367,000 abortions. That's family planning. In what world? We're in a me society. Whatever pleases me, I do. It doesn't make a difference what other people think or how it affects them. Hmm? Drugs, drugs, sex, crime, entertainment addicted, addicted to drugs, to food, to all kinds of things. Anything that seems good, our children will fall for unless, unless dad and mom, you're teaching them to be wise. That some things that look good are not good. How does a godly father affect all of this? What can he do to protect his children from some of these negative influences? It's very hard. In fact, a study done a number of years ago of how teenagers form their self-image about themselves, found the following five variables that affect children all their lives. Because chances are, without Christ, you will become your parents. Look like them, talk like them, walk like them. 
So who are they? Hmm? These are the things that young people wanted. Number one, the number one thing that young people said, teenagers, a close relationship with their father. That doesn't put the mother down, but they wanted to be close to their dad. Secondly, spending a lot of time with their father. Hmm? Thirdly, spending a lot of time with their mother. Fourth, feeling secure and loved at home. Hmm? And finally, doing well in school. And most of us push the number five ahead of number one, two, three, and four. What kind of environment, what kind of atmosphere are we creating in the home? What stood out in this study was how important a good relationship with a child's father affects the rest of their life. In fact, many years ago, one of the greeting card companies thought they were doing something good. They sent thousands of boxes of greeting cards to prisons around the country for Mother's Day and Father's Day. And then they were surprised to find out that the prisoners who were in prison used the Mother's Day cards to their mother, but very few of them sent a Father's Day card to their father. You know why? They found out that men in prison, women in prison, blame their father for why they're in prison. Wow. We can make a difference. With the Lord as our father, we can make a difference. Dad, as you approach fathering with all the things that are negative in the world, you need to have a positive approach, even in a negative world. If you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you can overcome all of these things, and your children can as well. Fathering a child calls for a loving influence, a loving influence all the time. Not only does this affect the child's life, but it also affects yours. It's wonderful when you see a family and everybody's doing well and they're all successful, the children as they grow up. Isn't that wonderful? You can have that in Christ by using the principles of this book, how to do it, and with God to help you. You see, God uses fathering in men to build up emotionally, mentally, and spiritually strong children. Dad, don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed with what you're not doing. Hmm? I know people that are working two and three jobs to help their family out, but they're never there. Believe it or not, your children want you there more than they want ten gifts at Christmas. Hmm? Take small steps, Dad. You're not going to win the battle overnight. Take small steps to change what you should be doing for your family and children. Make a commitment to the responsibility of being a godly father as God is our father. Reflect him as a father. In Psalms 127, it says this. Sons and daughters, in the 13th verse, are a heritage. That means a future from the Lord. Children are a reward from him, not a punishment. But what is or who is a godly father? You know, in the Psalms, we've been studying the Psalms, and they are a great mirror of what a godly father and mother should be. King David had a relationship with God that God described as a man after my own heart. And if you know his life story, he was surely not a perfect man. He made a lot of mistakes. But he looked at God as his father. In fact, in one point in the Psalms, he says, though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me in. In the NIV, he says, his, the Lord will receive me. He looked at his heavenly father as his father because apparently his earthly father wasn't the man that he should have been. You can recall when the prophet Samuel came to the house of Jesse, David's father, to anoint the next king of Israel. And Jesse lined all his sons up to be blessed by the prophet but he left David out in the field. Hmm? What do you think that message was? In theology, there's a, re there's a theory that David might have not been the son of a father and mother. 
in the house. He had red hair. No one else did. And apparently, we don't see much family relationship in the life of David as a child. When he went to bring food to his brothers who were in the battle, Goliath, remember? They laughed at him. They made fun of him. There's a good chance that David's father was their father, but that his mother might have been someone else. And they resented that. But David saw that he had a father in heaven that could meet the needs that his godly father was not meeting. Listen to some of the things that make a, do a godly father. Are you ready? A godly father is a person of refuge. You'll see many times in the Psalms when he talks about God being my refuge and my strength, my fortress, and so on. You see, a godly father is one where a son or daughter can run to for refuge. It's a, he's a safe place for them, a place where they can feel safe. No matter what or who is threatening the child or David, his heavenly father was his protection, his heavenly father. Psalm 27.10, you can read it for yourself. Mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Dad, your children must know that you are available to them to listen, to protect, to advise, especially in times of trouble. You know, when everything's going fine, Dad, it doesn't mean there's no trouble. As we said, these kids are being bombarded every day with all kinds of garbage, in school, on TV, on the computer, with their friends, and so on. You can overcome all of that if you become the father that you should be. The Psalms also release, reveal the characteristics of, of a godly father. Listen to the way David spoke to God. Psalm 5, verse 3. Oh, Lord, you hear my voice. Morning by morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expect expectation. He had that personal, intimate relationship with his father in heaven. And that's what children want with their father on earth, a personal, intimate relationship. David was saying, Lord, I can tell you everything and anything in my life, and you're always there for me. You listen to my delights, and you listen to my distresses. I know as men, we have our own problems. But remember, you're reflecting into the lives of children. It's like a, a whiteboard or a chalkboard. There's nothing on it. You're writing those things on that board that make that child a man or woman and what type of man or woman they are. In Psalm 145, it also tells us about a godly father. The Lord is gracious and he's compassionate and slow to anger and rich in love. Hmm? Anybody listening? Slow to anger and rich in love. You can love your child and discipline them. You can love your child and guide them. You can love your child and still turn them in the right direction. We've mixed up love with keeping them quiet. Hmm? A godly father is a supporter. It doesn't mean going to the football game or the baseball game only. It means to support them, to be there for them. through the difficulties and the failures. It's especially in those times when, Dad, you're very important. You know, a lot of times we get angry and we say things we shouldn't like. You're stupid. Or I wish you weren't here. How about this one? I'm going to kill you. Hmm? I know we don't mean it, but to a child, they don't know whether you mean it or not, whether you're telling the truth or not. Again, look at the Psalms. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them and delivers them all from all their troubles. We have the ability as godly fathers to get advice from our Father in heaven to help our children through anything. Amen? And it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. When you see your child, something's wrong. You don't know what it is. Do you try to find out? You know, sometimes we think 
of a family with a whole bunch of children. But e actually, every one of them is different. Same house, same food, right? They're all different personalities. And as a dad, you have to treat them differently sometimes. Not better than the others, but differently. You need to get them alone by themselves to find out what's going on in their individual life. And you might have to do that differently with every one of them because they're different. A godly father is a companion, a joyful companion, David prayed in Psalm 17 and 8. Who wants to be around someone that's always complaining? Hmm? Always down in the dumps. That reflection is going to be in your children. Look what it says here in Psalm 17. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Talking to his father, that I'm that precious. Our children need to know that their dad loves them. And giving them gifts and presents is not that message, believe it or not. But that dad enjoys being with them. That's what they want. They want you to be with them, not just give them something. A child is more likely to have inner peace with themselves and the world around them when they sense that they're deeply loved, that they're respected and they're cherished by their parents. Your children are important. Let me tell you something. If you look at the history of a lot of great men and women, you'll find that when they were coming up as children, people had actually cursed them. Albert Einstein, his teachers wrote, he'll never be anything. He's a failure. Imagine telling a young boy that and writing it on his evaluations in school. I guess he fooled them, right? You can hurt people with words, even as parents. Time spent with your children shouldn't just be for discipline. Most of the time, that's what we're after. You did that, I'm going to punish you, right? What about when they do something right? Do you encourage them? Do you love them? Do you build up their esteem, or do you keep batting it down? Hmm? Now, I know there's different cultures represented in the United States, too, and I've met a lot of people who grew up really hard, being whipped and so on. Again, that's not the style today. And you may have to make some changes. A godly father is a father who's present physically. You hear what I'm saying? Some children see a man walking in and say, who's that? Oh, that's your father. Oh, I didn't know. Children love to be with their father. Dad, do you get that? They want to be with their father, especially little girls. They want to be with their father. Because chances are, if their father's a failure and a, has all kinds of bad habits, that's who they end up with when they get married. Because they think that everybody's the same. How can we help shape the life of our children if we are not there? Hmm? Now, I know there are times when you can't be there. But when you are there, do you make the most of it? Hmm? Children don't need gifts or presents. They need you, Dad. They need you. They need you. I remember when my son was growing up, I'd come home from work, and he'd be out there with his friends on the, on the street. And I'd walk over. He was about 11 or 12 at the time, and I'd hug him, tell him I loved him, right in front of his friends. He used to get embarrassed by that. But finally, as he grew up, he says, you know, Dad, after you would do that to me, my friends would say, gee, I wish my father did that. Hmm? Are you afraid to tell your children you love them? Hmm? Why? They're you. They're part of you. If you don't love yourself, then you can't do this. But in Christ, we can be a new creation. Listen, the way you grew up may not be the right way to grow up your children. Hmm? Times have changed. Things have changed. People have changed. But God doesn't change. And the things we're talking about go through every nation, every culture, and everything. Children want to be with their dad. They want to spend time with him. The Psalms also talk about a father who is a counselor and a guide. While under immense peer pressure, a child should be able to go to his or her parents for non-judgmental help in making decisions. What did you do? <gasps> hmm? And we're ready to punish them instead of trying to find out why. Why did you do this? And then correcting it, explaining why 
Certain types of behavior can lead to all kinds of problems. Hmm? David cries out to his Father in heaven over and over and over again. Lord, listen to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, teach me your ways. So many different things. Look at Psalm 139. I call it the stop and frisk part of the Bible. What does it say? Search me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Wow. What a powerful prayer. The guidance of a godly father should include spiritual direction as well. Dad, our children should see Jesus in you and us, in our words and in our actions. My father worked hard six days a week. On Sunday, we were in church. But every night, we'd see our father kneeling by the side of the bed in the bedroom. As tired as he was, he would pray for each one of us. And sometimes he'd pray so much he'd fall asleep. And as kids, we made fun of him. But that picture always stayed with me, that my father cared about me. And he was interceding for us with his father in heaven. Do they see that in you, that you care? about them. Father, it's not unmanly to pray. Let me tell you something. I've been in some very tight situations where life and death were on the, on the balance, and you could hear people praying that I never expected to pray. There's a book called There Are No Atheists in Foxholes. I wonder why. Godly fathers do discipline their children. I want you to, it's not a free ride, children. When you do something wrong, you might have to pay a penalty. Hmm? Life is like that. But when your parents are disciplining you because of something you did wrong, and they explain to you why, hmm? discipline without explanation is, is a waste of time. Why did you, why, what did you do wrong, son? Here's what you did wrong. And this is what could happen to you if you continue to do that. I love you, and I don't want to see you go through that, right? They need to be educated in the things that are right and wrong and how doing the wrong thing can hurt them physically, spiritually, mentally, in all kinds of ways. Parents need to be committed to help develop in children the ability to make wise choices and decisions. Parents, dad, what you're training your children is to be an adult. If it's a boy, you're training him to be a man. If it's a girl, you're training her to be a woman, to make the right decisions and the right choices, to marry the right people, so that they'll be happy and you'll be happy too. And their children will carry on the same generational blessings. We have to teach them about how to make right or wrong choices. And that doesn't stop there, by the way. As they grow up, they're not children anymore, they still come to dad and mom when they have problems and give them, again, wise, godly advice. A godly father also is quick to forgive. Hmm? Children are going to do things wrong. Yes, they might be disciplined, they might be punished, but it's done in love. And we have to forgive them. Don't bring up their, all their mistakes every time they make one. Women have a habit of doing that. How many men know that? Who's brave enough to raise their hand? Women have this unique gift of remembering everything their husband did wrong. Ah, we touched a nerve. That's the wrong thing to do, even in a husband-wife relationship. Men do have a habit of forgiving, even in the world quicker. I've seen men fight and get up and shake hands, and that's the end of it. Not women. But remember that. That can be a deadly trap. And especially with children. To remind the child of every time they failed is not helping them. But reminding them of every time they were successful is going to help them. Amen? We're guiding this child through life. He's, they're not going to be with us for the rest of their life in the sense that you're training them to go out to leave the nest. You hear me, young people? You're being trained to leave the nest, not to stay in the nest, and to have a family of your own, hopefully learning the same principles that you will use 
to have godly children as well. Forgive. David knew his heavenly father as slow to anger and rich in love. God forgave David. Yes, there were consequences, but he forgave them. Growing up for a child is not easy today. It never was. Hmm? Children will have good days and bad days. How many know that? They'll make mistakes because you never made one, right? Hmm? I had an uncle in Connecticut when we visited his house. In the kitchen, he had a barber strap hanging on a nail. He wasn't a barber. Barber strap is a wide piece of leather that an old barber would use to sharpen a straight razor. And let me tell you something. It hurt. He was making a message there. You're in my house. You're under my rules, right? Don't hold failures and mistakes over your children. Help them through it. Be an encourager in love to support them and correct them as necessary. Be a good listener. You see, love doesn't mean, oh, son, you can break the table. Oh, I love you anyway. That's not love. But love them and let them know when they do things that are wrong and why. And correct them as necessary. But listen to them. What's going on? Why are you acting like this? And so on. A godly father is also dependable. Your children have to learn and know that you are dependable and trustworthy. In other words, that you keep your word. Hmm? That you keep your word. Our Heavenly Father keeps his word, and he's teaching us to keep ours. And you need to teach your children the same thing. But they have to see that example in you. Whatever you make a promise about, keep it. Hmm? Dads are not perfect. How many know that? They're not perfect. When you make a mistake, admit it. Don't cover up a mistake with a lie because you're training that child to do the same thing. I didn't do it. My brother did it. My sister did it. Someone else did it when he did do it. Dads are not perfect. When you as a dad make a mistake, admit it, correct the situation, and apologize if necessary. I know fathers that will never apologize to their children, and that's foolish because we are fallible. We are flawed. And our children need to know that they may be flawed in some way too. But to recognize it, once you recognize it, you correct it, and you ask God for help not to do it again, right? Children don't need a dad who's a god. Uh, the king has walked into the house, right? Elvis has left the building. They need a real person, a person who has emotions, a dad who can cry when he needs to cry, a dad who can laugh when he needs to laugh, a dad who can hug you when you need that hug. Hmm? They need to see how a, re a responsible adult copes with problems, how they react in a way so they can learn to cope with theirs. When you're going through a problem in the family, do they see you and your, and your wife praying together? Family prayer? Because if it affects one, it affects all of you, right? Whatever the problem is. As we close, a godly dad needs to be available. Hmm? You need to go out of your way and look at your time schedule and make time to spend with your children. Again, not always together. If you have more than one child, you need to be alone with each one of them. They're all different. And you'll have a different kind of relationship with each one. You may favor one over the other, but don't tell them. That's a mistake that Joseph's father made in the Bible. Meaningful communication, not, hey, what, what was it? the Yankees win, did the Mets win? That doesn't have anything to do with heaven. Hmm? Communication is not talking. It's basically listening. Children have their own language today. You've heard kids say, leave me alone. Is that what they're saying? Really? Leave me alone really means don't leave me alone. 
I got a problem. I don't know what to do. I may not even be able to, to bring it out. That should be a, a red light for you. Something's wrong, son. Let's take a walk. What's, what's going on? What happened? And so on. You see, this is all part of communication. It works for husbands and wives, too. A lot of these same principles. Listen to what the other person is saying. A godly dad guards his time hmm? with his wife and with his children and won't let other pressures interfere with his family time. Plan things as a family and plan things individually. God's not going to ask you who won the football game, but he's going to hold you on account for what you did in your family and how you brought them up. Because if you bring them up wrong, guess what happens? You're going to have a miserable old age. Get into the Psalms. Look at them and see how David maintains this constant relationship with his father. If you have a study Bible, they even tell you why the Psalm was written. Someone came against him. Someone was trying to kill him. Someone was talking about him. All these different issues, and he, he writes it out to his father in heaven. He sings it. They're all Psalms. God, what am I going to do? This is what's happening in my life. Help me. Give me strength. Give me wisdom and so on. You see, no matter how many bad or good things there were in David's life, he always, always went to his heavenly father for comfort, for guidance, and for direction. The same thing should apply in the earthly standard. Children, you should be able to go to your dad. And mom, and I, I'll say this to the children, if your dad is not doing some of the things that we talked about, go have a talk with him. Hmm? You hear me? Go have a talk with him. Say, Dad, I wish you would do this. I'd love to talk to you. I'd like to spend time with you. Hmm? Some dads need to be turned on like a TV or a radio. You know what I mean? Dad, I want to do more things with you. Hmm? Tell him. And watch what happens. Again, being a dad is probably one of the most difficult things in the world, as well as being a mother. But if you do it right, and I mean right not because you're smart, right because you're listening to God, and he will bring the victory in your life and in theirs. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Father in heaven, that you love us. Your love sent you, your son to the cross for us. You love us so much, Lord, and we don't deserve it. But you're always there for us. We can call out to you, no matter what's happening in our lives. And you're there to answer and to help us and to lift us up and to encourage us and to do things, Lord, that we cannot do for ourselves. Father, I just pray that each one of us dads will learn to lean on you and no one else. Learn to ask you for advice, ask you for comfort, ask you for direction so that we can pass it on to our children. Let's stand in the presence of God. If you're here today.